Are you surprised that you still have anger? I mean, anger in general. No, I'm, I'm not. Am I surprised I have anger? I haven't really thought about that one. I mean, I definitely have a temper. Yeah, so, I can tell. Um, <laughs> you know, working uh, like the difference me in a personal life and then at work is is completely different. I'm very intense. Like when I coached fighters, I was a very intense coach. And, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, the temper is is something that, that I definitely need to work on. So why don't you drop the anger and be done with it? Well, I think, uh, I've got a, <laughs> is it that easy? <laughs> yeah. You know, all right. Well, I mean, you could, I've got to find, I've got to find that. I'm just telling you, the only way, that anger that you have came from your mother. We're all recreated in our mother's image. All human beings, men and women who are born of the flesh, which is of the mother, are recreated in her image. And then when you get older, you realize, wow, I do have this anger. She did do this. She didn't mean it, but she did it. I'm wrong for resenting her. She couldn't help herself. And when you go and forgive, the anger will be taken away from because it's a spirit. Mm. And it's going to be hard for you to admit you resent your mother because you are so identified with her. Mm -hmm. And for you to even think of resenting your mother is like, it's like going against God. Uh, yeah, it's foreign to me when you said it. I'm like, huh, I haven't really ever thought about that. Yeah, right. And most people don't think about they They can tell you all day and night about their fathers. Mm. But they don't tell you about the mothers because they have identified with the mothers and the mother is God, but they don't know they have identified with the devil. They think they have identified with the mother and the mother is not going to admit that she turned you away from your father, that she has recreated you in her image by imposing her will on you because women are jealous of the, the, the woman's, women are jealous of the man because of that order of God, God in Christ. Christ and man, man over woman and woman over children. And so women are jealous of the man because Satan is their God and the God above is the man's God. And so the God below is jealous of the God above. And so the, the God below uses women to destroy the son of, of God. All males are sons of God. They weep beta males because they've been turned away. But they're still sons of God, just been turned away from the father. And the hardest thing in the world for a woman to do is to admit she has turned the children away from the father. And that's why you have to find for yourself and you will be made free. When you say the woman's God is the devil, what, 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 what do you mean by that? Uh, Satan is the woman's God. Uh, when, when Eve uh, listened ah. to the serpent, Okay. And he convinced her to turn away from her husband who had a relationship with his father. So Adam had a relationship with God. Eve had a relationship with Adam and all was well. She would listen to her husband. She would obey her husband. Things were fine. But she, she, she went out to the garden to collect some black eyed peas and cornbread and candy yams and stuff. And she kept going back and Satan convinced her she could be her own woman. You don't have to listen to your husband. He's listened to his father. He's an alpha, a beta male, right? And she believed the serpent. Mm. And once she believed the serpent, she no longer listened to her husband who had a relationship with the father. And she, Satan became her God in that very moment. And then once Adam listened to her because she convinced Adam, and once Adam listened to her, the woman became the man's God because Adam could no longer listen to his father because he listened to the woman who listened to the devil. So the woman became the man's God and um, the serpent became the woman's God. And that's what's going on. But when you forgive, God will forgive you and turn you back to the father. That's why you can't love God unless you forgive your earthly father too, love him. And then you will be fine. But you got to forgive the woman. And this is for men and women. Women mm -hmm. have to forgive their mothers, too, because the mothers know not what they do. They were screwed up by their mothers and so on and so on. And Christ came that we all may be free, but you got to forgive, starting with your mother and father first and return to the father. 
You're not going to return to God until you go through your earthly father by forgiving him. That's a lot, yeah. huh? Yeah, it's a lot. I'll, when you I'll, think I'll, about that. Um, what did you say? What do I think about that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm definitely open to looking at my relationship with my parents. Yeah. And I mean, I, I do feel like we have a great relationship, so I don't think it would be hard to go to them and say, hey, I'm working on this. What do you think? <laughs> and, you know, I'd be happy to do it, actually. Yeah. And I, I think, promise you, what if you do it, but I really realize I do have this anger against my mother and my father, and I'm wrong. They can help themselves. I promise you, your life will change for the good. Your life will become easy. Your burdens will be light. You have a clear mind. You will have peace on earth, but you're not going to have it until you forgive, starting yeah. with your mother and father. And you cannot enter into the kingdom with anger because anger is of your father, the devil. And that's why when you pray, your prayers have not been answered because you've been praying to the devil uh, instead of God, but you call the devil God because you've been praying in your thoughts, praying to the devil. But when you do forgive, all mm -hmm. your you're going to be able to see. You're going to wake up. You're going to live in the presence of God, and life will be amazing. You live in his present right now. Do you believe that you have a past or a future? Do I believe I have a past or a future? Uh I mean, I would say in, a, in the normal sense, like, uh, I don't know if you're asking like a spiritual question, but like just in, yes, I would say I have my past and I have uh, you know, the future as well. Do you have a past or a future? Yes, I was just saying, yes, I think I, think I, I have a past and a future. And where is your past? Uh, say behind, you know, it's, it's in the past. It's behind me. Where? Um, where would my past be? I, I, I just gone. I mean, it's like it's uh, it's it's kind of like the the it's the past of who I was, right? Or what what society was, or what life was. Where is your past? Um. I, don't, I guess it's the past, I guess, also would be in my mind because I remember things. And where is your future? Mm, I would think that the future, gosh, the future is, well, it's, it's, it's not promised, but it's, <laughs> it's in the future. <laughs> Sorry. I, and where uh, is your future? Where is my future? Um, yeah, I guess I guess the future, ultimately, like spiritually, heaven would be the future. Um, on earth, I, I wouldn't know exactly. So then why do you believe you have a future if you don't know? Um, well, I guess I would know. I guess my, my, if, if you, from like a faith standpoint, my future is heaven. And where is heaven? Um, I, I, I don't know. Where, where is heaven? <laughs> <laughs> and so why do you think future is heaven when you don't know where heaven is? Because you have uh, faith. In what? Faith in God. Faith in Jesus. And, and so why do you think your future is heaven if you don't know where it, it is? Oh, I don't know, like the physical location, I guess. Uh, that I'm not sure about. I, I think it's in, in some other realm, um, um, not on earth. You don't believe that the future is, I mean, that heaven is on earth? Mm, not, not, not at the moment. <laughs> and well, how is it that God is right here on earth in you, but heaven is not in you? I... Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Why would you put heaven in a, a different location than God? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying.
What am I saying? That uh, God is God is with me, and so heaven is with me, and we're part of heaven now. In the, I guess the uh, or in, in the future. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is inside of you, right here, right now. It's above too. When you die, your body drop your body. If you drop your body without this anger, you just continue. But if you drop your body with anger, you continue living in hell. Because anyone that has anger is already living in hell right here on earth. And when you drop that body with that hell, you're just going to continue in hell. But if you drop your body with love by forgiving, you're just continuing in heaven. It's just continuing. Because since, since there is no death, you realize you never die, right? Right. Yeah. You do know that, right? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, you, you die and then you go to heaven or hell. I mean, that would be the... But you don't die. There's no such thing as death. No, I did, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, Christ defeated death. The only death you need to do now is the ego death, which is of the thought, of the mind. Yep. You die from the ego, you're free. But you're not going to die from the ego until you overcome the anger of the heart so the light of God can destroy the ego, which is of the devil. So let me just tell you this. There, the reason you don't know where your past or future is because it doesn't exist. It's an illusion in your mind given to you by the devil, and he's constantly reminding you that you have a past and that you have a future. It's all an illusion, and that's why God said, take no thought about those things because they're illusion. It's not real. All you have right now is it's the presence of God right here, right now, all the time. Your presence is always eternal life, is always right here, but if you go into an illusion of a past or a future, you're living with hell. You're living with the devil because he wants you to be in time instead of being in eternity right now. So he yeah. makes you think you have a past or a future, and it doesn't exist because whatever happened then, it happened then, and when then was over, it was over. But the devil makes you think it still exists because you believe the thought. Gotcha. Bring every thought into captivity. All thoughts are all lies, all the time, about anything. Amazing, huh? <laughs> yeah, I got to put it into practice. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do this silent, my silent prayer. All right. Rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer, right? And mm -hmm. God will bring you, he, he's going to show you, he's going to be with you, and he's going to bring you out of the illusion of your imagination out of the so-called past or future, and you're going to have an amazing life right now. And just learn to be still and let go and let him do it. You don't have to be whining and begging and blaming and on your knees and crying and carrying on. Uh, uh, that's not of God. All, everything's been taken care of for you already. Awesome. That makes sense? It does. It does. Yeah. Got, uh, a, got a little, you know, uh, look look into it all and kind of yeah. get an understanding, but, you know, it takes, takes work. Absolutely. I want you to give this silent prayer a chance and let me know what you think. I, I will. Uh, ha, uh, if um, your team could email it to me, be, okay. uh, the, that site would be okay. great. Okay, absolutely.